Hey. Ooh, let's go. Who we got there? We got Justin and Maddie Ice. Justin, Maddie Ice, what is happening, guys? We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the heart and history of Gamers on the Edge. I am here with Javier, and uh, we're just you. You guys got any questions? Throw them at us. But we are definitely ready to roll. Uh, we often get a lot of people who ask us questions about how we got started, when we got yeah. started. We're going to cover a lot of that. Uh, probably going to cover more about the heart and why we do what we do than all the other little details. But we can go straight back to, um, <laughs> I'm going to call it a cow. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. So so oh, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna start with Javier and... We're going to go way back to, how old were you? I was four. You were four? Yeah, you were like four yeah. or five years old. And, and tell us a little bit about the what happened when you were four or five years old. Okay, so now it, it definitely wasn't five years old. Yeah, no, it, was, it was way back. Uh, it, what, we should have we labeled this whole thing pneumonia, a cow, and a Nintendo 64. That's true. <laughs> that would have been a great title. Pneumonia. Which the Nintendo cow, 64 has Nintendo made a comeback. 64. The Nintendo 64 yeah. has made a comeback. That would have been great. Um, we should rename it. Anyway, that, that's what the podcast will so, be called. The <laughs> podcast will be called so, Pneumonia, a cow, and Nintendo 64. Um, when I was four, I had pneumonia real bad. It was like... Hospital Did, bad. Didn't you say that the doctor said like twenty minutes it was, later? It and was like hospital bad. It was it was bad. It was bad. Right um, away. Uh, I actually remember that whole day. I was kind of like zoned out. I didn't know what was happening, so I didn't say anything. I was just kind of like, I was just kind of dying. And I remember watching uh, the Superman animated series, <laughs> Brick Chin Superman and Brick Chin Batman, the animated series. Um. Uh, but yeah, when I got to the hospital, I was given this ginormous cow. It wasn't really ginormous; it was about. It was big. It was. It was a big cow. It was, it was, it was about pretty, that big. It, yeah. was, it was a hefty size. Yeah. Um. Uh, you named it Count Moo Moo because you're almost May May the Fourth. May be the with Fourth you guys. be with you. <laughs> Ironic that we're doing this yeah, today, but yeah, right? you actually named it Count Moo Moo. I remember that. I didn't even know who Count Dooku was. I just thought it was a funny name, and it would like Count Moo Moo was funny. So, so you named it that's, Count Moo. That's what I named it. And, and just bear with us because all of this is going to play here in a second. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, one of the other things was I was I was always um, the quiet kid in the hospital. I know, crazy, isn't it? Like, <laughs> I didn't cry, I didn't scream or yell or anything, didn't matter how much pain I was in. So the nurses liked me, so they would always bring the game console around to my room whenever they could. So I just played Super Mario 64 for my the entire week that I was in there. Yeah. And actually the funny thing about Super Mario 64 is I just started speedrunning that game. So Yeah, you did. You just went back, it's, to, it's, back it's to the roots, circle. back to the roots. So here's here's the reason we tell you that. Um, we're going to go back to 2009, I think it was. It was 2009. 2009, the economy went real bad. Uh, and unfortunately, my wife and I were working at the same school at the time. 25 people got laid off on the same day. My wife and I happened to be two of those people. It wasn't anything against us. Nobody was mad. We just knew that the economy was really bad. And both my wife and I got laid off. Lori and I got laid off on the same day. Um, we lost our house. We lost our car. And it was it was really funny because I, I know I say it's funny, but we have a little bit of a dark sense of humor. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little. And when the economy went belly up, we would literally drive home, didn't know if our electricity was going to be was, on. It was a game. Yeah, we didn't know if the electricity was going to be on or not. So we would, I would drive right up to the driveway, and we had a light with a sensor uh, so that if you drove on the, on the driveway, the, the sensor would go off and the light would come on. And I would actually stop on the road, not actually driving into the driveway at the point, and we would we would take bets to see who thought the light was going to be on and who thought that we had no electricity. 
That was <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was the game. Will we or will we not have electricity today? And I stopped right before we drove into the driveway, and everybody would put their their thoughts in whether we were going to have it or not. And um, you know, I said just weird, dark sense of humor. Yeah. Then we drive in, and we find out if we had electricity that day or if we didn't have electricity that day. And according to that, if we did have electricity, then we'd go in. If we didn't have electricity, then we just drive back out to the mall and hang out in the mall for another <laughs> two to three hours until it got Let's dark. Let's go AC. Yeah, and and it was time to go to sleep. Yeah, because they had AC also. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward a little bit, and at this point, we start, you know, to to realize that there is absolutely no way we can keep the house because people were talking about well you know you can just stay in the house they won't throw you out and we're going yeah we can stay in the house but we have no electricity we have no running water at this point yeah so we had to leave um also hey tony what's up guys thank you so much for joining us and uh so we had to leave we had nowhere to go uh and and fortunately we have an amazing family the, our issue was not our family. Our issue goes back to Javier's pneumonia yeah. and Victoria's pneumonia also because she had, you know, respiratory issues. So what ends up happening is at this point, we do have a place to go, but we ended up kind of like gypsies, like you said, you know, the nomad days. <laughs> the nomad days, um, as I called them. Because what would happen was we would be at my parents, and my parents had a big enough place for us to, they have an to amazing live with house. them. Yeah, we could live there. The problem was they didn't have any AC. No AC. And for those of you who don't live in Florida, during the summer, it forget the hot. summer, during the days. <laughs> during the daytime. In Even Flo at night sometimes. In Florida, it would get so hot in my parents' house. It's so hot. That... Javier and Victoria literally just couldn't breathe. It was just too hot for them to breathe there. It was just, it was just ridiculous. It's uh, wild. We had one of those things that would tell you the temperature, and it was like, yeah. it's <laughs> raining. And it was like, it's not it's raining. It's like the it's humidity just, is a hundred percent. It's, it's so raining bad. on you right now. Yeah. It's. It, but anyway, so when it got too hot, we'd have to go to Newport Ritchie, where is where their grandmother lives. The problem there was. <laughs> Grandma had a one bedroom <laughs> apartment and it's seniors only. So we're not supposed to be there. Yeah. So we have all five of us literally just living in the living room. Crammed in the living room. And when we say cram, it was we once we put the mattress. Okay, on the floor, so you guys you guys see yeah. the like how far the camera goes in the room? Yeah, that's about the there's, size of it. There's more room that the camera sees, then there was room in the living room. <laughs> when, we, when we would put the mattress down, there was no room to walk around the mattress. The no. mattress took up the entire living room, and then we all five of us literally just slept there. And we had to be really quiet because we weren't supposed to be there. So when it got cool enough, then we'd go back over to my parents. And when it got too hot, then we'd go over to Newport Ritchie. Yeah. And so I, we couldn't even put it was, you guys... It was a lot of back and forth. Yeah, we couldn't even put them in public schools because we didn't know whether we were going to be in Tampa or Newport Ritchie or who, who knows where at any given time. <laughs> so fortunately, I, me being a teacher, I homeschooled the boys um, at the mall. <laughs> Basically, we would, we would go to the to wherever mall we were at, whether it was the Newport Ritchie Mall or the Clearwater Mall or the Tampa Mall. Uh, you guys got homeschooled for like two, three years. It was three years. Yeah, fourth through you seven. got you got yeah you got homeschooled for three years. Where I would literally just go to the mall, we jack their internet <laughs> <laughs> and homeschool you that way, and you guys did all right. So all of that to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and my wife. <laughs> so all of that to say that through all this mess, whether we were in Tampa, whether we were in Newport Ritchie, whether I was homeschooling them at the mall, whether my wife was homeschooling them at home, whether I mean it was it was just this this juggling thing. 
we were looking to do something that we could say, okay, guys, uh, things are bad, but other people have it worse than we do. And this is where pneumonia, a cow, yeah. and a Nintendo 64 come into play. We asked the boys what they wanted to do, uh, if they had any ideas of something that they wanted to do for somebody else. Um, again, just kind of like, listen, we know things are bad. We lost our house. We blah, 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 and all that stuff. And we're kind of bouncing around from one place to another. Uh, but do you guys have anything that you want to do for somebody else? Javier gets flashback all the way back to when he was four and decides, I want to give stuffed animals. To the hospital. So we said, okay, what do you want to do? Well, how many beds are there? So we found out all children's hospital had 259 beds. So our goal was to get one stuffed animal, um, one stuffed animal for each bed. That was our goal. One for each. Yeah, one for each one. And that was actually the very first thing we did. That happened in... Wow. I don't even know. I lose track of time going backwards. Just trust me. It was way back. So we did that. It's 2010. Yeah. 2010. Early. No, it, no, it was it, it was, was late it, it 2010, was, I think. No, it was it was 09, December of 09. I'm almost positive it was December of because 09. Either was, way, the point here was we got them. We got them. And we showed up to the hospital. And then the hospital at that point decides that, you know, they're like, go ahead and, and just drop them off, you know, put them in the box. And we tell them it's not going to fit in the box. It's not going to fit in the box. Because <laughs> we showed up with two trucks full of stuff. Two animals. trucks with like, yeah, like 300 and something. I don't know. 30 bags. Yeah, I think. we went, we definitely went over. Um, it was, it was, it was rather humorous. Yeah. Uh, 210. You're right. It was 210. Um, Journey's Pals was our first thing. And so it was two, 210 Journey's Pals, our very first thing. That was the stuffed animals. That was really cool. We had a great time. And then we're like, okay, well, we need to do something else. What else are we going to do? So forward to 2011, you already did the I already did stuffed animals. So. Did the stuffed animals. So we found out about Extra Life. And Extra Life was this 24-hour gaming marathon, pretty much just like you would do a walking uh, a walkathon where you would say, hey, I'm going to walk five miles, donate a dollar for every mile I walk. We were going to say, we're going to play 24 hours, <laughs> donate a dollar for every hour we play. It was so incredibly laid back. We went and did it at John Mark's place. JMO, you rock. JMO, Shout we out love to JMO. Um, JMO, one of the founding fathers of the whole thing here. We ended up doing it at JMO's house because we didn't have a place of our own. So we ended up connecting with one of our for one of my former students um, and went to his place to do this. We played for 24 hours. Most of that 24 hours was just in, I think it was, we it was went, Halo Reach and um, uh, Mirror's Edge. And then we went back games. and forth between board games. We played Munchkin. Yeah. We played um, uh, the storyline one. I can't even remember the name of it. But we basically went back and forth between video games, board games, video games, board games. And Lori would take photos and post them on Facebook with a link to our Extra Life page <laughs> saying, we're still playing, donate, please. And we raised $233. I remember, year one, $233. Um, it, was, it was amazing. And, and as far as the Extra Life is concerned and all that, that has exploded. Thanks to you guys, the community has been, I, I can't say you know enough about how grateful we are we went from $233 our first year to now we've donated over $80,000 since we started doing this. Um, and <laughs> like we would have never even thought about like, Oh yeah, we're going to donate $80,000. That was, that was never <laughs> a thought that was, 
that's way too far out yeah, there. Yeah, that was that was way out there. Uh, I didn't even know what a thousand dollars looked like. We, back yeah, then. yeah, you know, it was really funny because I, I we actually hit a thousand, I think, on our second year. I th- um, uh, second or third year? I think seven. It was our third year because our first year was two thirty three. Second, second year, year was, was like seven forty nine. Seven forty nine. Seven forty two. Sorry. And then our third year, we jumped to like. 1400 i think it was like 1500 or something yeah like 1522 and then from there the community got involved and then it started to explode the community it's all about the community and we're going to talk a little bit more about the community because listen it was so cool we started doing weekly events we started doing weekly tournaments and here's let's go (laughs) here's the funny thing about the weekly tournaments so this is how supportive the community has been and how much this is all about what you guys have done and and really helped us with um in she's 2015 we started doing a weekly tournament at paradise it was a a beer place um and we started doing weekly tournaments there for mortal combat nothing mortal else. combat just 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 mortal combat it was in april and in May of that same year, because I don't know how to do anything small, I'm not good at that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you have to bear with us, and you have to give my wife Lori and the kids uh, some serious credit because I say crazy stuff, and I really believe like we're gonna do this, and it's gonna happen, you know, and. And that was one of those moments. Um, we started doing weekly tournaments in literally April of 2015. And for some crazy reason, I decided that we should do a big tournament in May of 2015. It was like, <laughs> it was kind of a leap. I was like, listen. I know we just started doing these weekly tournaments and we're getting like 10 to 20 people every week. It's like, we can do this. This is easy. We should run a big tournament and try to get like a hundred people out here. Like literally that was my train of thought. Didn't we get like 60 for smash alone? We, we had, I I tell you, well, I'm not going to look it up right now, but we had over 200 people in there. Um, it was way we, too hot for that, by the way. It was way too hot. It was. So, <laughs> it's like a semi-outdoor brewery, and it was. Um, it was. I rented two outdoor AC units, and it was still too hot. We sent somebody out for ice to refill those things like every two hours. We ran over to the point. <laughs> they first of all, they sold so much beer. They should have just been happy. Yeah, right? <laughs> with that. I, and I and they were very happy about the beer. But at the same time, we we ran over so long um because we had so many people that showed up that <laughs> <laughs> we had completed and, everything except funnily enough MKX. Yeah, the top 4 of Mortal Kombat. We were still trying to get top 4 done. And the owner of the brewery, very nicely, was just like, I don't know if they were just out of beer and out of time, you know? <laughs> I think it was both. Um, but it got so late. They're like, listen, I got people. They got to go home. We got to go home. We got to start over tomorrow. And again, that was part us not expecting the community to to show up like they did. It was huge. We had the Miami crew showed up. Uh, first match with Brett and his whole crew from down there. Um, you know, purple guy. I mean, it, it was just, it was insane. Orlando showed up. Everybody showed up. Mortal Kombat. I ended up having to bring Mortal Kombat Top 4 back to the apartment. Yeah. And we're trying to keep it, like, really quiet because, <laughs> again, it's late now. So we ended up running Top 4 of Mortal Kombat here in the apartment. Um and the very next year, we started renting out the Holiday Inn. Yeah. We literally went from running weeklies to renting out the Holiday Inn the next year because we just outgrew it. The You guys were, were amazing. The community was so supportive, so great. Um, 
and, and we just continue to to raise money for the kids. At this point, not only are we raising money for the kids, but with the support you guys were giving us, we were actually taking time to fix all the game rooms and all the gaming yeah. consoles at the hospital, um, which our hospital has over 50 gaming consoles. And it takes about 10 hours to set one up, you know? It takes about 10 hours to set up an Xbox One. And and we just literally, I remember the first time that she sent us home oh, with everything because she, the the lady in, in Child Life, she gives us like literally almost like $10,000 worth of equipment. Yeah. And uh, the first time they sent us home, cars. they sent us home with like five Xbox. No, there's cars. a lot more than that, I think. But either way, we had like, was it? We had 10. Yeah, we had 10 mm. Xbox Ones. And then we had, I want to say about... I blocked out that part of the... Yeah, memory. yeah, we had like 10 Xbox Ones that they sent us home with and about $500 of gift cards for each Xbox One. It was a lot. It was a lot. And it took us a long time to set that stuff up. We literally just started setting it up little by little and start taking it back one at a time. Because, again, it takes about 10 hours to set one up because everything has to be digital. Just because, you know, they don't want the kids to get sick or anything. I would so. still do that again tomorrow and the day after. And the day after, before I had to move 1,200 dolls again. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a whole other story. <laughs> so yeah, let me let me take you on this little rabbit trail real quick <laughs> so you understand what he's talking about, the dolls. Um, again, I have a tendency <laughs> to do things big. I, and to say yes. He has a tendency to say yes a lot. Yes. Yes, exactly. And um, I was one of the board members uh, with the Boys and Girls Club locally, which I love the Boys and Girls Club. I grew up in the Boys and Girls Club uh, when I first came here to Florida. So it, it was, you know, it was a, it was a, it, it was just a really good, good time I, I was having with them there. And um, the lady in charge said, "I have some dolls." that I can't get rid of. Do you think you could use them, you know, and do something with them? I said, yes, of course. We'll get rid of them. So I, one thing I did learn is that next time. Ask how many. I need to ask how many. Because when many? she said I have some, <laughs> some, I didn't realize she meant 1,200 12? of them. Hundred dolls. Yes, but it's not just twelve hundred dolls. It was twelve hundred dolls, and then you had boxes of costumes. Oh, and the shoes. And then you had shoes. There were shoes too. Shoes to hold your phone. Yes, and they just... were so. <laughs> Who knows why? <laughs> and then you had hands. <laughs> they added hands for jewelry. Why they had so I many? Don't know. I have no idea. I've never seen so many hands in my life. I don't know. But here's the thing. It was so much. And I'd already said yes. I was like, yeah, sure. We can do this. Don't worry about it. Um, then when she showed me what she meant by some, um, we ended up having to rent a U-Haul to get all the dolls. And then we ended up having to rent a, was it a 10 by 20? We ended up renting a 10 by 20 storage unit so we could put all the dolls in it in order to give them away. And we literally gave them away. I mean, yeah, we gave them away in Ybor City. We gave them away in Pinellas uh, County. We gave them away everywhere. We took a truck of 300 to Ybor City um, to give them away. <laughs> and it was really funny because nobody would believe that we were literally giving them away. They're like, so... How much do you want for them? They're like, no, no, they're free. They're free. They're like, just take. No, 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 no. Like we. <laughs> <laughs> and then we finally ended up having to put a a little donation box, like a little mailbox, you know, for donations, because people refuse to take them for free. Like, can is we that give mailbox you something? Here? Huh? Is that is no, no, it's not here. But anyway, it was. <laughs> we it was still use the same mailbox. <laughs> If you've been to our weekly events and you see the little donation yeah, yeah. mailbox, it's the same mailbox. So we literally gave away 1,200 
dolls. I still we by the way, we still have some of the shoes left. I'm pretty we sure do. we still have some of the shoes they're, left. The the shoes are, are we gave them away at the movie at the Cinderella movie, the shoes. Hmm. Um but anyway, so that was the sidetrack right there. Twelve hundred dolls. Yeah. They're like, can you give these? Yeah, I got this. Don't worry about it. That was a um, better movie than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so so back to where we were. 2015, our very first uh, GOTE for the kids tournament. It explodes like nobody's business. <laughs> we end up going to the Holiday Inn the next year um, because – we had nowhere to go. I mean, it was like there's no way we could do it again. And by the way, we only did three games that year. Yeah, only three games. We did three games. We did Mortal Kombat, Smash 4, and um, USF uh, 4. You know, so Ultimate Street Fighter 4. Um, that was it. We didn't, do, we didn't do anything else. And still we had close to 200 people. You know, we had over 200 people once you consider everybody who just came to hang out and, and drink with our friends because it was at a brewery. I just want to tell you for a second, I was, he has his notes up right yeah, here yeah. just so he gets the dates right. Because I'm <laughs> awful. He's awful with dates. Remembering dates backwards. It's terrible. I'll never forget anything forward. But, but backwards? Backwards? Shh. We're, we're lucky he remembers his own birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's usually because Facebook because tells fa him. Facebook reminds me. <laughs> I was so confused why he has USF4 on his notes. I'm like, <laughs> Ultimate Street what, does, Fighter 4. <laughs> what does the University of South Florida yeah, have to no, do with gamers on the with that. So, so we fast forward through that. Uh, now, this year, we're actually moving it to Tampa, Tampa. Um, because the Holiday Inn in Clearwater was too small now to hold the venue that, that yeah. you know, the community has been so good. Um, through all of this, we've had so many great opportunities to work with, you know, and I, I, I don't even want to start saying names because I know I'm going to forget people and they're like, then I'll feel bad. But there <laughs> are so many that have truly just helped us out um, so big in so many ways, you know, whether it was through the Extra Life, whether it was through Extra Life United, I see some of you in here, uh, whether it was um, the GOTE for the kids. And, and then it became this two this two big event a year, which again, we never done. So all of a sudden we're like, Oh, we're going to do extra life, but we're going to rent out a gym. So we ended up taking over the cheerleading gym, uh, which I will, man, she was so good to us over in rock solid all stars. Um, she would just let us have the cheerleading gym. We would take over that cheerleading gym and do our 24 hours there we had, you know, the Star Wars crew show up. We had all that fun stuff. Um, then one year we ended up doing the 24 hours at the Holiday Inn, and that was thanks to the Microsoft store because the Microsoft guys were like, you should do your 24 hours right here because, you know, this is this is a much better venue. I'm like, yeah. we can't afford this venue for the 24 hours. That's a completely free event for people to come and just donate. Yeah. And they're like, well, what if we pay for it? I was like, well, if you pay for it, then we can afford it. We'll do it there. <laughs> <laughs> so they did that year. We outgrew it. We ended up now in the big gymnasium, uh, which I hope they don't sell because they're talking about selling it. I really, really like the new venue. It was a really the, good venue. For the Extra Life, you know, um, event. That was so good. It was so big. Had plenty of space. Uh, really, really cool people, really helpful. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's, it's just been a crazy journey. We've met so many great people. Now we do weeklies. Obviously our weeklies are on hold at, at this moment in time because of the whole Corona thing. Our May event is no longer in May. It got pushed to July 25th and 26th this year. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're hoping and praying that by then it'll be all good and ready to go. By the way, The Edge. Let me let me let me clarify something about the edge because a lot of people ask me why we capitalize the T on the edge. Is G O T E and the O is the only thing that's not capitalized? It is because we are the edge. The uh, edge. The edge is where the action takes place. You know that's that's where whether it's a battle, whether it's um, new adventures, whatever it might be, everything takes place on the edge. 
and that's that's where we want to be. We want to make make sure that we are we are doing things. We don't want to just talk about things, you know. Um, and for those of you who who don't know, I I pastor a, a small church, and we are Journey's Edge, and it's the same thing, you know. And it was really funny because the Edge was was the original uh, the guy who does all our all of our uh graphics yeah uh who i absolutely love jay lass uh that's his street name uh <laughs> jay lass uh, when when he first thought of the edge he was like it's the edge it's where, where faith meets action you know where where instead of just talking about doing things we're actually getting things done and and that has always been our our, our goal our goal has always been to you know, we want to talk. We want to encourage people. We want to make sure that we are letting people know that that things can be better and that things are better. Yeah. You know, it's 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 about being grateful. And I posted something yesterday about, you know, if if feelings were infectious, you know, if I, I would infect people, everybody with gratefulness. gratefulness yeah. That is our secret sauce. It really is. Um, gratefulness is you know what and and this is this is i haven't said this anywhere except for uh to my wife Lori, who's standing <laughs> who's sitting over here um but this will sound really weird but just go with me here for a second but if i was going to describe myself in any way like if somebody said describe yourself in the shortest way possible <laughs> This is going to sound really funny. Just go with me. I would describe myself as a humble badass. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because I believe that I cannot be beaten. You know, I, I know that Corona is doing a bunch of stuff. And listen, it's hit all of us. And, and it's hit gamers on the edge, obviously, because we're not doing our weekly tournaments. So financially, we're having to deal with stuff. But you know what? We lost our house. We lost our jobs. And I will not be beaten. There's nothing out there that, that I feel that can beat us. There's nothing that I feel that can beat me. Having said that, it's not because of me. It's because of everybody who has ever supported us. And even everything that I do and everything I am capable of is because of what somebody else did for me. Uh, whether it was my parents in the past, whether it was former teachers, everything that I am and everything that I am capable of has nothing to do with me and has everything to do with other people who have poured into me. And that's where my humility comes into place in that I really do believe that I am incapable of losing, but it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with everything that was poured into me. And that's why I want to pour into other people. I want to pour into every single person that I come in contact with because I realize that everything I am and everything I'm capable of has nothing to do with me. And that's why I feel like a humble badass because I do <laughs> feel like a badass. You can't beat me. But, again, it's because of everything that others have done uh, and, and brought me up and, you know, just – I'm just grateful. I'm I'm extremely grateful, and I hope you guys, you know. Oh yeah. You know, is the same way. You know, regardless of how much we have, how much we don't have, um, we're just grateful. You know, we're grateful for for your support. We're grateful for everyone who has taken the time to to just even listen to this. To uh, a lot of you, you know, call us, write us. Uh, I've gotten a lot of messages. Just with people just checking in on us like, Hey, how are you guys doing? You guys okay? Um, I've gotten a lot of, uh, donations, you know, small donations here and there from, from people in the community who, who never said, Hey, you know, uh, I'm going to make this public. They literally just, uh, donated to us, uh, during these hard times. And I don't really want to call their names out because, um, I, I believe that, you know, that they will be rewarded uh, in like fashion. Um, and I'm, I'm very grateful for those people who really helped us out during these these hard times. But again, they're hard times. Uh, we have each other. And that's the one thing that we've always had, you know, through this whole mess, whether when we first lost our house and we first started all this and we our journey started, 
we've always been together. That's I guess that's part of the reason why quarantine hasn't been that big of a deal. I mean, we yeah. lived we lived in a living room. At least now we have room to walk around. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. We don't have to step that's over anybody. Nice. And then we, <laughs> we, are you are you having flashbacks to the to the mat? <laughs> So, because there were five of us there, we went through so many air mattresses. Air mattresses <laughs> aren't meant to be used on a regular basis. And not by five people. Not by five people. <laughs> Our air mattresses, I remember. And and there's two ways the air mattresses go. And again, we're getting side trailed, but this is this is so true. The num one way that side that uh, air mattresses go is they Thank go. You. And all of a sudden, you're on the floor. The other way they go, it's like a gunshot. <laughs> it's like a big old shotgun shot. Just remember that, like pow. Just and like, then you just fall. And you just fall. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. Oh my goodness, it was so bad. Just free um, fall. But anyway, but yeah. So I mean, that's that's kind of where we were. Um, some people have asked me, you know, what are, what are the plans for gamers on the edge? What do you, what do you see five years from now? <sighs> five that is, years. That from is now. the hardest question ever. And I think one of the reasons that that's the hardest question for me is because I have, you know, my dreams. I mean, to, to totally simplify things, I would love for us to have our own location where we can just have not just weeklies, but have birthday parties and whatever, you know, we could just, just a place for the community to come hang out and belong. I mean, that's, that's what I really, really like. I really miss, you know, during these times, I really miss our community. We did one online tournament. It was so dreadful. Um, <laughs> just because it was it was it was tough it was great to see the people play yes, but it was but, not fun to run no because at all. we're so used to being with the community hanging out with the community talking to the community that being away from it is 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 really really difficult it's hard to be rowdy yeah, by yourself yeah so um although we're pretty good at it we're pretty decent but you know it it's it's always about the community so for the question when it comes up about, you know, um, what are we going to do five years from now? I would love to have our own place. That's the only thing I have that I can tell you because things change so quickly. And I think one of the things that we've been really good at from day one is adjusting. You know, when things happen, we adjust. We, yeah. we do whatever needs to be done. And um, it's always about the people. So if next week all of a sudden the people decide that they want to do something else, then we'll do something else. Um, I, I've always said, you know, the weekly tournaments, people are like, oh, can we do this game? I'm like, get me eight players. Get eight players. Get Just... eight players. We'll run it. Like, literally, my standards are really low when it comes to what we will run. <laughs> run anything they were like can we do this game if you get me eight players we will run it and then sometimes they're like oh i only had six that's all right we'll do it anyway <laughs> but my goal is always let's get eight players listen if we have eight players we're building community and that's what we're all about we're we're about building a community building a place where people feel at home, building a place where people are comfortable, building a place where they can forget about everything else. One of the coolest things that happens with us is we've literally had a police officer from Kenneth City over yeah. here. We've had a nurse. We've had a guy work, working on his GED. We had a, um, a, a guy over here at Eckerd's working on his law degree. You know, and, and all these guys are sitting in the same room playing together because it's a great place to come out and just just feel like, you know, part of the family. And that's that's what it's all about. It's about making sure that everybody feels like they're part of the family, having a great time, and at the same time being able to make a difference in the lives of others. Um, you know, for us, we're kind of blessed in that we get to make a difference in the lives of not only the kids that we are playing for, but yeah. we also 
get to work with the people that we are playing with. Um, so, so we get double blessed here, uh, for us. So we're very, very grateful. Um, so yeah, so five years from now, I don't know. It depends on what the community wants, because if you asked me five years ago, what we would be doing today, it's not this. Yeah. I would have never thought that we'd be doing this. I would have never thought that I'd be getting in a vehicle and driving to Atlanta with three players for a tournament. <laughs> that was just, it was not even within my realm of possibility. No, it wasn't even, it wasn't even close, you know, um, because again, but, but again, it's, it's about the people. So that's what the people want. That's what we do. Um, so that's kind of the, the heart and history of gamers on the edge. You got anything else you can think of? Uh, uh you guys got any questions? It's kind of wacky. I've been out of the state more in the past two years than I had previously in my entire life. Yeah, that's true. That's we have been funny. out. You know, and it's funny. I mean, we've traveled so much within Florida, and then all of a sudden we start, you know, jumping out of Florida. And we're trying um, to move to bigger projects eventually. Yeah. We're always – listen, we're always looking for more – Um I always feel like like uh, if you haven't seen the robot movie, what was it Robots? It was called Robots. The one with uh, with uh, Robin Williams. Yeah, it was called Robots. I always feel like the the main character, the big character there, he's like, see a need, fill a need. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up; it's funny. Anyway, see a Good need, movie. fill a need, um, and that's what we're always looking for. You know, we're always looking to to help out in any possible way. Um, that's, that's where our heart is. Uh, we want to do more of that. We want to continue to do more and wherever it's needed. If we got to travel, we'll travel. If, if it's right here in our backyard, we'll do it right here in our backyard. Uh, but it all started with, uh, pneumonia, a cow and a Nintendo 64. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's the story and we're sticking with it. Uh, it will continue. It will evolve. I don't know what's going to happen right now. We're, again, hoping and praying that this event in, in July will take place. We're, it looks we're like it looks like it might actually take place. What is yeah. Something swinging. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, like, I was, I was trying like, not to point it out the like, whole time. What in the world is like, that? I just saw it out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like. <laughs> so, anyway, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for hanging out with us. Absolutely appreciate everything you do, um, your support, your love. Um, it's just been great. Uh, we are here, and we will continue to be here, and we will go anywhere that we need to go. Yay! And uh, once again, just thank Yo, you so much. Yeah, thanks for the donation. Ooh, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Love you. Let us know if we can help in any way. I'm Javier and I are starting this podcast thing. If you got any ideas of things you want us to talk about, yeah, throw them at us. Because we it. will listen. We will talk about whatever we need to talk about, even if we don't know anything about it. I don't know a lot. <laughs> I don't know a lot about a lot of things, <laughs> and we still talk about it. We so still we talk about it. We appreciate it. Once again, thank you so much. We love you guys. We're out of here. See ya.